kind of think that I have two messages for you tonight, but it could be that they're going to, you know, we'll see what Holy Spirit does. Uh, so I don't even have time for all my hilarious stories. I'm just going to dive right in. I'll be up here another time. I can tell you other stories. We're okay. All right. Okay, so, uh, the first one, uh, a little bit of a spiritual housekeeping to start. Um, yes, I had I had a word from Jesus that I believe is kind of a, to encourage us, let us know about some some things going on uh, spiritually, some lies coming through that are kind of sweeping through, and they're they're getting a lot of people at one time. Okay, and so uh, let's take the power out of them, shall we? <laughs> All right. One of these lies is you're not the one for the job. Okay? So there's, yes. Okay. That ripple of laughter is because that's, that's a pattern in the spirit that's happening lots. It's hitting people in different ways. It will kind of get you individually, but it's happening to lots of people at one time. You're not the right person for the job. You're not going to be able to do it well. It's not you. Okay? Part two is that things are going to be the same as they were before. They're not going to get better. They're going to be really bad like they used to be. Okay, those two things, sweeping through. Uh, and I, I believe that he was showing them to me. I noticed a while back because, uh, man, I've just been, I've been hit with this more than ever the last week and a half. Like, like harder than ever before, actually. Um, and, and as per usual, like every single time, I first think it's just me. Um, and then, and then I listen cause I have, um, a lot of people that, you know, come and tell me how they're doing. And I heard the same words. I heard, you know, maybe I'm not the right person for this. And I was like, wait, wait, I've heard that too. It means it's a plan and it's a scheme. So what we can do is we're actually going to start with a little bit of ministry time for that, okay? Just get that out of the way first. Uh, because uh, Jesus was reminding me about in Exodus, Moses is talking about how he's not the one for the job. He's trying to convince God, who, who is speaking to him, saying, I'm going to send you out to do this big, amazing thing, free all the slaves. And he says, mm, me? No. Here's, here's what's all wrong with me. And we all have our own list, right? This is why I can't do it. And one of his questions is along the lines of, who am I that I can go and do this? Okay, he asks, who am I? God responds with, I will be with you. Did, did he change the subject there or answer his question? He answered his question. That's who you are. If you are sent by God, and you know that, that just became the most important thing about your identity. Everything else takes a back seat. All the things that are wrong with you, I'm not saying they disappear. They just take a back seat. They get off the throne is what they do. Because he's, he's aware, and later on in those verses, he says, I'll be with you, and also I will teach you. All right, so he, can, he, he knows your weaknesses. He's aware of them, and he has a plan. And so I, I want that to be the most important part of my identity. It's not all the reasons why I can't do stuff, and I shouldn't do stuff, and I'm not the right person, and blah, 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 all those lies. Because if he sent me, that's a really good thing to figure out, by the way. If you don't know that, ask him. It's a really good thing to know. And this is not just like, okay, off into some foreign country to do some crazy thing. No, I mean like the person you're talking to in front of you today. Did he send you there? If that's true, you just go for it. You just go and you wreck the enemy's kingdom. You just go and do damage to the darkness. Just go and do it because he's with you. What else matters about your identity? What else trumps that? It doesn't have to be anything unless we let it. So walking in the opposite spirit of that, because the good news is that God chooses the unlikely almost exclusively. 
It's like that's his first choice. This is the worst person for this. Oh, I'm just going to change everything through them because it will be so obvious that it's me. This is the best choice, according to him. So walking in the opposite spirit of this, what, what the spirit wants to do is um, uh, disconnect you and make you hide and want to control stuff. Don't, don't look at me because I'm so bad. So you create distance or hide. I actually, that actually came out of my mouth a couple times this week. Maybe I should just be under a rock somewhere if I'm, if I'm not the one for this job. That came out because he wants to stop us. So, again, walking the opposite spirit, instead of hiding and controlling, is to surrender. But I, I believe I heard from him. It's not just surrender to Jesus. It's surrendering to him doing something good. Now, if you just got a little uncomfortable, that's disappointment talking. Don't you dare get my hopes up. And so when we're uncomfortable with the unknown and the idea of things maybe being good, the only thing left is familiar. That's the only other option. So that's the other thing. That's why it's like things are not going to be the same. They're going to be, or things are not going to be different. They're going to be the same as they were before. They're going to be really bad. Oh, no. Yeah, that's disappointment talking. So uh, let's just spend a little bit of time praying about that. And so I just uh, encourage you guys to be aware of what Holy Spirit's bringing to your mind. Talk with other people about it, too. Um, accountability is huge in this. Get, get your stuff in the light. Uh, so just whatever he's showing you right now, if this relates to you, if it's like, I don't even know, okay, the Holy Spirit can show you if it is or it isn't. Um, but I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna pray and I, I, I want to encourage you guys to engage however you can, if that's you, if that's, if that's hitting a spot in your heart, just to be ready to surrender, at least be open to him moving you in a good direction. It shouldn't be so scary, right? Isn't it weird that it is? I'm talking like old stuff's coming up. Old. Like, I thought I prayed through that. Wasn't I done with this already? I think things are about to be good. <laughs> I think they are. And so, Jesus, we choose to surrender to what you're doing what you're moving us into. The parts we know about and the parts that we don't know about yet. The unknown. And if there's any part of a good future that feels scary, Jesus, I ask for your peace that passes understanding. For your peace and for real hope to rise up. That we would not hide when we're not supposed to be hiding, when we're supposed to be bold that we would not pull away from people when we're supposed to press in and help them and love them and be open. And that you would put little red flags, that you would tell us that your Holy Spirit would guide us and help us because we need help and we want to see the truth. So we choose to surrender and to renounce and reject the lies and to walk away from them today. Amen. All right. Sermon part two. Here we go. What I actually was going to talk about tonight. We're going to go to Matthew 24. Super lighthearted. Don't worry about it. <sighs> Starting at verse three. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do a few uh, different sections within there. Definitely go read the whole thing sometime. Um, but this is just like kind of summaries of what Jesus is talking about. Because we have a message point here that is uh, salvation is through Jesus alone. Okay, he's the only one who can open the scroll. He's the only one sitting there on judgment day on that seat on that throne. Who else's opinion do we want? That's right. Has to be Jesus. Salvation is through Jesus alone. So we're going to listen to some Jesus 
and just be changed and transformed by him. All right. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming and at the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, see to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places, there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginnings of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And at that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, most love will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Okay, so question for you. Uh, what counts as enduring to the end? Is it physically surviving something? Would be good to know. That's who's going to be saved. It would be really good to know. Okay, so he makes a comparative statement in there. Verse 12, because lawlessness is increased, most, that's terrifying, most people's love will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end. Okay, so there's two different ones, right? The one whose love does not grow cold and the one who does. Okay, right? So that, to me, says you got to still love him at the end of the day. That's enduring. If at the end of everything, everything coming against you, and we'll talk more about those in a bit, at the end of all of that, do you still love him? I find it really interesting, too. Uh, another version of verse 12 uh, says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. I find it interesting that he doesn't specify uh, love for who? Why doesn't he say your love for other people will grow cold? Because obviously if it's wickedness, it only could be other people, right? Why doesn't he specify love for God or love for people if it matters so much? In worship the other day, I just had this moment where he was saying, it's because they're the same thing. I don't want it to mean that either, by the way. That is tough. Okay, let's look at um, let's look at First John three ten. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. Okay, that passage says a whole bunch about that too. That if you don't love people, you don't know him. What does he say about people that don't know him? Uh, away from me is what he says. Be, here, here, here's, why I'm, here's why I'm saying this. Because according to the Bible, there's no such thing as, well, my love for God is doing really good, but for people, it's kind of suffering right now. They stay at the same place. So he didn't need to specify. So this is a good grid. Is it just my emotions are like I'm affectionate for him? No, it actually has to look like something. So to me, that makes sense that, that the plan of the enemy would be to make it really difficult to love people, the increase of wickedness, because that will also make it difficult for us to love God. And that's what we need to have true at the end of the day, at the end of our lives, still true about us. I love God and I love him according to what he says is loving him. That is incredibly important. According to what he says, if you love me, you will obey me. And he says to love people. It's like, have you met people, Jesus? Okay, all right, fair enough. Again, I don't want it to mean that either, but I'm having a hard time finding something that disagrees with it biblically. Doesn't stop me from looking, but okay. Uh, there's got to be a way around that one. Just kidding, uh, sort of. Let's keep going with verse 24. This is Matthew 24, verse 24, because he says he has a bunch more really amazing keys in here. 
For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead many. Uh, sorry, mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance because he wants us to get it. So if they say to you, behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. Or behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Uh, let's keep going. I, I went, what, verse 36? Is it there? 29. Can we start with verse 36, please? But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Isn't that interesting? Wait a second. Jesus doesn't know what day it is? That's what I just said. That's what he just said. Weird, right? Anyway, keep going. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Verse 42. Therefore be on alert, for you do not know the day which the Lord is coming. Be, but be sure of this, that if, uh, if the head of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, because before he said uh, it'll be like a thief in the night, okay, uh, if he had known the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. Okay, so I don't even have time to totally go through this point. Uh, but the spoiler alert is that being ready is being in love. That, that's how you be ready. You're in love all the time. If he said, okay, on, on March 13th, 2034, that's the day I'm coming back. Oh, what a relief. I don't have to do anything until March 12th of that year. Oh, what a relief. Because all I really wanted what, what is what he was going to give me, not him. So it makes sense to me that he's not saying. Because what he's looking for is genuine Love for him. Genuine love. So a couple things that come against genuine love. We've been talking about this so much lately because it's what's more important than it. Falling in love with him. Still loving him at the end of the day, no matter what comes at you. So he talks about a couple things that can come at you. And I, and I want us to be um, aware, to be open, to be ready, to allow Holy Spirit to be ministering to us, to be exposing stuff if he has to. He has to, spoiler alert. Um, he does. So a couple of things that he says, uh, as lawlessness is increased or, or the wickedness, like wickedness is going to increase. So are there things happening? Are there, are there difficult situations with people that are making you love him less? That's one of the places where it's going to be difficult to love him or to stay in love is because people disappoint us. That's either other people's wickedness or, or our own. That will separate us too. But that's something to be aware of. Am I so mad at people? Am I so disappointed by people that I'm starting to not have connection with him anymore? That's really something to look out for because that's going to pour cold water on the fire. It does a lot. So it's really worth looking at. It's really worth being open to. Um, another thing that he mentions a bunch of times, that's why I left that in there, is false prophets. Okay, he's talking about false prophets. Uh, I want to talk about false religion for a little bit. Nothing pours cold water on a fire of love for Jesus like false religion. Nothing. Just, just pay attention to the way Jesus speaks to people operating in false religion, how he interacts with them, the anger that comes out. I just, I, I was thinking about this today. It tends to feel like there is, um, okay, there's being a real Christian, and then way on this side, there's like being a blatant Satanist who kills everybody, okay? It's a little dark. Sorry if your kids were watching. Um, okay, and then in between, and then there's like, you know, you're not a believer and you're mean to people, 
and then there's like you're you're not you're not a believer but you're generous you're kind and then you know you're still not a believer but you're really nice you're a good person and then there's false religion and then there's a real christian that feels true sometimes doesn't it you pluck this one up it goes way out there way the most evil it is it is poison that has no taste or scent so you drink cup after cup after cup wow i'm so hydrated everything's good having no idea it is slowly killing you slowly leading you to hate jesus that's where it's going i promise you that's where it's going false religion is out to slowly make you hate him i can explain that to you some other time i do not have time now but that's uh okay how this happened in Jesus's life is a perfect example of it. False religion led to people shouting, crucify him. That's where it went. That's what killed him. He talked to a lot of people just in the middle of their sin. And it wasn't even them who put them to put them, them on, him on that cross. Sort of, but not really. Kind of, but who really, yeah. False religion put him on that cross. That's who it was the easiest for the enemy to work through. False religion. It is a poison that has, you don't know that it's poison. That's why it's so dangerous. And that will kill your love for Jesus. I, I uh, how weird are we going to go? All right. While I was talking about, while I was prepping this, I've been thinking about this for days and days and days. One of the, one of the nights I was doing this, uh, a okay, little bit weird, but something was watching me from in the closet, and I re- and I recognized him. Same thing that was there when I was Miles' age. <laughs> watching from the closet, because one of the reasons why I'm here is to rip that out of people so that they get set free. So you get to meet real Jesus. And you don't die hating him because you were duped forever. So it didn't matter. And I knew, oh, (laughs) We're just, we're just getting a little bit scared because people are going to be set free and they're going to know the truth. And they're going to meet real Jesus. And if you have met false Jesus, chances are you kind of hate him. And that there's a part of you that's so angry, so deeply angry that he's been so disappointing because that is what false religious spirit does. It makes Jesus disappointing by lying to you, lying to you, lying to you forever. Till eventually like, okay, I can't do it anymore. I'm sick of the counterfeits. I'm sick of trying to figure out which one is his voice so tired of trying to figure out which one is his voice i have been there so many times because so many counterfeits came and just were hitting me every time it's like oh, i don't even want to ask him this because i know the first thing will be twelve thousand counterfeits coming at me but you know what in the midst of that he has been fighting for me he has been fighting for you and the only one telling you that he's not is the enemy through false religion so, if you would like to fall in love with him, and I have one more, a really important one. Uh, the other thing about this idea of falling in love is sometimes it feels like, well, that's not really my personality. Because it feels emotional and out of control. If you don't like emotional and out of control, that idea feels uncomfortable. So, I want to challenge you to... Just open your hand with that. Leave that in an open hand because you don't really have a fair chance at it, at falling in love, if there's these obstacles that he told us about in the way. If it's actually people stuff, it's actually false religion. That's the reason why it's kind of scary to be out of control. That's not a good feeling. If you've had that feeling before where you really, you were just like head over heels for someone and then they turned on you, that's not a good feeling. That kind of stays with a person, unfortunately. Not not even just in a loving relationship, like with your friends. 
and, and you genuinely liked them and loved them and were hurt. And so I just, I felt this, um, I felt this invitation from Jesus' heart and, and, and what our response could be to at least tell him, okay, I don't know how it would look. I'm kind of scared of how this would look. I don't like the idea of being out of control. I wish it was just I could do the right thing. I can learn how to do the right thing on the outside, but still keep my heart safe off to the side. I wish it could be that, but it's starting to sound like it isn't. So I don't know, but I'm open to it. If you'd be willing to tell him that tonight, without knowing what it's going to look like, without knowing how it's going to feel in your heart, because that's like, it's part of it and it's not, it's, you know, it's, there's moments, whatever. But he didn't, he didn't make people that weren't made to be in love with him. There's not a single person that wasn't really made for it or that's excluded or that can't experience that with him. He made everyone for him to be perfectly satisfied in him. So you are not the exception. You can't be. So just get that out of your mind if you can. And so I, I want to encourage you guys, if you'd like to have that moment with Jesus, um, uh, altars are open. <laughs> Ministry team, just go for it. Do whatever you want to do. Um, and, uh, and, but if you'd like to be be up here and just have that moment with Jesus. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm open to it. I'm open to my heart being connected. Guess what? Really logical people can be in love. <laughs> Analytical people can be in love. People with horrible, horrible pasts <laughs> can, can come and be in love and be changed and transformed <laughs> and changed by him and met by him. You are not the exception to this. You're not. And it's important to him. He's looking for genuine relationship that at the end of years and years of false religion or years and years of people hurting you, even years of you hurting other people, can you, can you surrender that and be in love with him and let him change what he wants to, but not from a place of just, um, I'll just change my behavior, but you can change me. You can change me. Uh, so, so let's pray. And just, if you'd like to be up here, you can be up here. If you want to be in your seats, if that's, if that's where you're connecting with him, just, just go for it. But, but I want to pray for you guys. Yes, definitely come forward. I thought I did that, but uh, <clears throat> go ahead and come forward. <laughs> come, and, come and have that moment with Jesus because he wants to have that moment with you. I know it's scary. I'm well aware it's scary. <sighs> so just, he, he wants to meet you because he made you to meet him. That's what he made you for. So first of all, fear go. And Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your patience. You are so unbelievably patient with us. Thank you for that. And so I ask right now just for an increase of courage to open our hands and say, I'm open to it, Jesus. I'm open to, to walking forward in love with you. I'm open to my heart being affected, whatever that looks like. Yeah, so I ask for truth to reign right now. Truth to reign and lies to lose their power in Jesus' name, that they will be shaken off, that they're just not going to have the power anymore. But that truth will reign, and, and that if people, uh, I just see he's giving some people pictures. And so just let him talk to you that way. Don't dismiss it. Let him talk to you that way. Yeah, so I ask for more, more truth more visions of you, Jesus. 
that any false versions of you that have tried to torment, that they lose their power tonight, that everyone here gets to see the real you and talk to real you and hear from real you and be changed and transformed by real you. Not just on the surface, but all the way through, all the way deep down, deep, deep down. Oh, changed all the way in. Not just on the surface, she says you go deeper and deeper. That what you want to have happen in this church would happen. Because real you is amazing. Real you is so strong and so pure and so holy and so passionate. That's a really common one is that the, a false version of Jesus doesn't look passionate, he looks passive. So let's kick that image out. Jesus, you are passionate enough to be ripped apart on the cross for me. That's who you are. And we want to see you. Come on, man. He's calling you further up and farther in. He's calling you. You're not disqualified. He's calling you. Deeper in, further up, more, farther in. There is no arrived. There is no disqualification. There is no, it's not me. He says, I, his name is that I am with you. And that's the identity. That's who he is. I am with you. Move from your spot. Make a show make a declaration I'm stepping into my calling I'm stepping into my purpose I'm stepping into you your love I'm stepping deeper in I'm surrendering to be a captive of your heart I'm surrendering to you Lord further up and farther in come on don't just walk home don't just go he's here the king is here the lover of your soul is here. The rock of your salvation is here. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world is here. Come and confess. Come and seek him and find him. He's calling you. He's calling you further up and farther in. He's calling you. Seek him and find him. Call on him while he may be found. He's here for you right now. Some of you are still sitting where you were. Some of you are still standing where you were. Some of you are moving backwards. Stop. Stop and go forward. You're disappointed? Move forward. Fall into his arms. I hear him calling you, some of you into the ministry, some of you into challenges, some of you into sacrifices, some of you deeper and deeper. He's calling you, respond to him. Here I am, Lord, here I am. Choose me, Lord. Do something to respond to his call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a phenomenal revelation we've had tonight. Don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let the Lamb of God pass you by. Grab the hem of his garment. Take virtue from him. Grab on. Answer the call. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Come on. You don't have to say it out loud for all of us to hear, but speak to him. I hear you, Lord. I hear you. I feel you, Lord. I, I know you want 
and then just, I will, I will say yes to you, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. What do you want? Yes, Lord. Where do you want me? Yes, Lord. What do you want of me? Yes, Lord. What do you want from me? Yes, Lord. Just say, yes, Lord. My heart is open to you. Search my heart, oh God, and anything in me that is not pleasing, Lord. Throw it out the door. I say, yes, Lord, to cleansing my soul. Yes, Lord, to taking my life and dismantling it. Yes, Lord, to calling me. I will follow you. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the words and my soul will be healed. I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming after you, Lord, such as I am for the glory of the living Christ, the living Jesus, the living Lamb. He's alive. He's alive and I'm forgiven. He's alive. And he lets me be used by him. He's alive. He pays the debt that I could never pay. He pays the debt that I could never pay. Yes, Lord, I let you pay my debt. Yes, Lord, I receive your forgiveness. Yes, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. I'm with you, Jesus. Here I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it go deep, Lord. Go deep in their hearts. Go deep in their souls, Lord. Wherever they're kneeling or standing or sitting and crying out to you, Wherever they've moved to, Lord, to receive you, let them have you. Go deep, Holy Spirit. Go deep in their soul to places they never knew you could go, to places they forgot they had. Let go deep, Lord. Take captive, Lord. Take captive the demons of false religion. Take captive the demons of selfishness, the demons of hate. Take them captive. Put them under guard and send them out, Lord into the outer darkness, Lord. Deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil one. Can you say amen? Yes, Lord, deliver me. If you find anything in me, search my heart, O oh God. If there is anything in me unpleasing to you, cast it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe so that you never miss another video or live stream. And if you'd like to support the Father's House, just click the Give button. Thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you soon.